All right, time now for the Executive Edge. Automakers are joining forces to lobby Congress to extend the sales threshold to allow electric car buyers to get a lower federal tax credit. Phil LeBeau uh, joins us now with that story. Hey, Phil. Hey, Joe. The uh, federal tax credit for electric vehicles is something that was put in place early in the Obama administration, and they set the level at the first 200,000 electric vehicles built by a manufacturer. And at the time, people said, well, that's a nice little start. Well, we're finally at the point where for some electric vehicle makers like Tesla, like General Motors, Nissan is another one. That $7,500 federal tax credit, which goes to the buyer, the buyer after they buy the car, when they file their federal tax credit, federal taxes, they can get that tax credit of $7,500. Again, it's for the first 200,000 EVs sold in the United States, and then it is phased out as sales grow from there. For Tesla, that means that it is going to be phased out after January 1st. In fact, the company has sent out emails to prospective buyers saying, look, if you're interested in buying, this is the time to do it because it's going to be cut in half after January 1st. They are pushing for the federal tax credit to be part of the reason that they boost sales before the end of the year. As for General Motors, as you take a look at shares of General Motors, it is facing the possibility of the EV tax credit, whether it's applied to the Volt or the Bolt, that's going to start to be phased out sometime early next year. It'll hit that 200,000 sales threshold. As you also take a look at shares of uh, Tesla, we should point out that GM, Tesla, Nissan, all of their lobbying groups are working together in Washington to convince members of Congress, look, you need to raise that threshold, whether it's to 300,000 or 500,000, or to make it potentially in, indefinite, although that's unlikely to happen. Here's Elon Musk talking last night on Axios on HBO about how close this company came to really uh, perilous times if they did not make uh, increased production of the Model 3. I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, th threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the, the company was bleeding money like crazy and, and just, if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? Within, within single digit weeks. Within single digit weeks, coming close to death. Now, some people will listen to that and they will say, oh, come on now, you could have borrowed, you could have made sure that the company was not going to fall apart and, and completely collapse. But that's an interesting comment in terms of uh, the importance that the company put on meeting that Model 3 production threshold. So Guys, we, we spoke you. with Mike Allen and he said, when they went back and kind of analyzed it, what it meant to be near death meant that they would probably have to come back for another capital raise. I don't know if that would right. have been met death for the company or if it would have just right. been really bad for Elon Musk personally because of how much he has on the line for this, how much he's borrowed, and if he would sure. have hit margin calls on some of those things too. Right. What's your interpretation of near death? I mean, right. he definitely did not want to raise capital and, and look to the their credit. market would have punished him for, them, for that. You I would a, think, I, but keep in mind, Becky, this is a company that whenever it's gone to the markets in the past, it's been counterintuitive. Right. The market has not punished the company Phil, for raising money. 